Hey, Wayne. Oh, hey, Matt. What do we got going on today? Uh, I think today we're going to put together the transmission bands for the Model T here. Nice. I've already got it kind of set up over here. Um, I've done one already. Fantastic. And so we got two more to go. Um, something you're going to want to check is to make sure you buy the 26, 27 bands because the brake band, I believe, is wider than the other two. Yes, it is. And the kit will come with new bands. Nice. Another good little trick is to buy yourself an extra pouch of the um, rivets because yeah. you will mess them up as you're trying to go through it. Yeah, they come with exactly the right amount and yeah. you will use more. Yeah, they'll promptly mess that up. And we'll go over, I'll go over some miscellaneous tools, screwdrivers, punches, hammer, that kind of stuff. And then we have a handy dandy um, rivet wrench. Yeah, sure I think we talking. might have shown one of the unboxing videos. Yeah, maybe, and that uh, will help you kind of set them in there. But there's some other good tricks too, or custom block of wood to help set some of the rivets. And then we'll go over all that. But that's the plan for today is go ahead and finish these out. Matt might be working on the body here in the background, right. yeah, putting yeah. on the body panels, getting them bonded up and things like that. So come tote along with us. All right, some of the tools we have, a couple of decent sized punches, a couple of awls or ice picks, and those are gonna help us kind of pre-drill the holes into the Kevlar. Um, screwdrivers are definitely a help for pulling out the old band. Another thing we have that I kind of had to make for myself, because setting the first one's a little difficult. So I've got here a six millimeter socket, or if you prefer freedom units, it's quarter inch, and a three eighths. And that'll help us kind of balance this on here as we drive that in. And you'll see that here in a minute. All right, friends. So, like you said, we're gonna be doing the bands today. Got one already done. So one of the first things you wanna do is you're gonna go ahead and kind of remove the quick release. So it just comes right off. And what that does is it gives you access to one of the rivets there, the starter rivet. And you can see, you can kind of see the other one through the other clip. And this quick release is in there. So if you need to change the bands while it was still inside the car, you could take off the quick release and the band would come off the transmission, pop out, and there you go. So no quick, easy way, just kind of the screwdriver method. So you're gonna have to pop those rivets off. And they're just in cloth, so the cloth is a little tough, but it should come out. And that's a good example right there. I didn't even try to loosen the top one and it just fell right off. So not sure when these bands were done last, <clears throat> but it is kind of cool to know that you're going to be putting these bands on and they could be good for another 50, 100 years. Don't know. So we got our old bands there. We were thinking about making belts or something out of them, <laughs> putting them on the car. Okay, I'm gonna pop out the rest of our little oh. used rivets here. Oh. Matt's in the background working on the body panels, getting it cleaned up and ready. Oh, the skirt. Oh. Oh. Yep, you can just kind of use your Miscellaneous punches, screwdrivers, whatever you got on hand. And get all the last of the rivets. And they're just brass, so they bend pretty easily, which is good for taking them out, but a little more of a challenge for putting the new ones in. All right, so we're just gonna kind of take a look at the inside here, make sure we don't have any damage, chips, things like that. Yeah, nothing too bad. The other interesting thing is just to kind of make sure they're still kind of round. Something we encountered on Stanley was one of his bands was kind of flattened out. So if that happens, you can just bend it back in on a vise. No biggie. Here's some light sandpaper. 
just get rid of some of that grit in some of the spots. You don't have to go crazy. Make sure it's kind of smooth in there. Feels good. Start with our, make sure you got your thick band for your thick band. Got it? <laughs> so you're gonna make sure that you line up the end and it might stick out just a little bit, but it should line up pretty evenly. You just take our ice pick or all, whatever you have handy and kind of just set the center. I would suggest wearing gloves because you will eventually stab yourself. Ask me how I know that. How do you know that, Wayne? And what I like to do is drive your all, all the way through. Just kind of work it out a little bit. You can do it through both directions if you want. Doesn't hurt anything. You can use a slightly larger one at the end. Oh, kind of round it out. All right, so here comes the challenging part. Take our little block of wood here. There's also the other trick one glove just to work at a place that they would make sure we always wore gloves and one of the safety videos we had to say glove or no glove and I was told by my supervisor to never say that out loud otherwise people would think we were crazy <laughs> true story what I like to do here is make sure your rivet is kind of aligned so that the two uh, parts of it are along the lines of the band itself. A little bit already done, that way they're all just kind of lined up in the same direction. So next, we're going to take our rivet. We got our rivet set in like so. We're gonna take our smaller socket, six millimeters. You can see it kind of pushes on it. What we're gonna do is line those up in there and you can see so our socket's pushing on our rivet you can kind of see a space there that's all right for now and you can see there's kind of a bulge so it's sick uh setting up right there we take our larger 3 8 inch socket which is larger than the size of the rivet itself and grab that spin this around a little bit you know it's a little awkward After that tapping, you should start to see it kind of stick up through there, like so. So we'll give it a little more tap. So we're starting to stick through. Um, you can kind of see that the rivet is mostly in. But again, the starting ones are always the hardest. I like to start at this end, then we'll put one in at the other end and kind of work our way from there. All right, so after some finagling, you can see the two bits of brass at the end of the rivet kind of sticking through there, the ears of it. And what we're going to do now is kind of with the punch kind of uh, force them a little bit one way uh, to split. And uh, that just kind of helps the rivet wrench over there. And then we'll use one with just the rivet wrench a little bit later to so show you both ways to do it. Let's try to do the rivet wrench. So then we'll go on the flat and that'll go for the ears. Make sure you hit the center. The whole push through, you should feel the resistance give all of a sudden. And we give it a check. Looks good, nice and even. And next, we'll line up the next side like so. Don't worry, this will all squish out once we get the middle kind of set. So, same process. <laughs> it's going to pick up all your audio. Oh, ow, ouch, underneath the car. You are going to hear me whispering over there because I forgot that <laughs> Mike was on at one point. I'm like, same plan, rivet will go in.
Okay, we got the other side set, as you can see. And now you can either use the tool or we're gonna to try to use the uh, punches for this one. Now the mats come and help a little bit. If you can kind of see the two ears here, the um, rivet. So we've got us lined up on our socket there. I'm gonna put the punch on one. Ready, Matt? Yep. We're just gonna. There we go, through the center. Try this way. There we go. Try to split. And go the other way. There we go. Let's say we got them to split. And what I would do now is hit it with the big punch and that'll flatten it out but we're gonna use our tool instead here because it'll be consistent with the other ones. So we wanna make sure we got it in between, like so. Squeeze, nice and flat. Nice. Yep, and then if it's not too flat, you can kind of run your finger over it. You'll feel it. Just come back with your larger punch And you can kind of flatten them out that way. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but and there you go. Flatten it a little, oh, best you can. Nice. We've said in a video in the past, be sure that you flatten them this way for wear, not this way, because this goes against the drum, rubs against the drum yep. like that. And you don't want them pulling it up and the rivets pop out. Yep, you just kind of test them with your hand there, your finger, and you'll see they're kind of flat. And then again, you're just gonna squeeze that down until it's nice and flat in there. And I like to work, I did either side, I'm gonna do the center next and then I work my way out. Nice. So hopefully this all makes sense at the end because I know right now it's a very awkward, all hands in kind of process. <laughs> it's a good time. center one done so we're just gonna kind of keep working our way around don't worry about it being a little too bound up it'll work itself out smaller socket. We're going to loop our pin into it. 
Use a larger socket to kind of set on either side. And uh, then we should be able to see the tabs and be able to split them and flatten them at the same time. So just a handy dandy block of wood, little six millimeter quarter inch socket, and then just something a little bit larger, like three eighths to help separate it. Bottom. Yep. That's right there. Oh, that makes sense. Push the way back, so it was in. Pop down. That's so, it. show the camera this, Matt. Yeah. So, how this snaps in? Bang and bang and bang. It's not going anywhere. I don't know if you can see. Let me pop it off. Put a flathead right here. Lifted it up. Split it forward. Yeah, so it's kind of caught on the two little tabs yeah. there, so you have to flip it up and then get two it off. Lips. Yep, so just lift it up and slide Today right we off. found out. Today we learned. Chuck will tell us, yep. All right, so sometimes the rivet will turn if you're trying to do it. So be aware of that when you're setting it. Just take it out, check it if it's still good or not might be reusable sometimes they are not but that's all right just take your time with it and that's kind of the general plan we're done with the band brake band make sure we've got one two three four five six seven eight all rivets are in run our hand along them make sure they're nice and flat and if they aren't just take your punch even them back out just do it flat right there and you can hit it that way again make sure to put back on your quick release don't worry once it's in the car it'll be pulled in like that then we can work on the next one so same process we're going to rip out the old band make sure to clean it up put in the new band starting at either end we'll squeeze it in do the middle and I just kind of work my way out back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So we're at the end. Hey Matt, so uh, what's next? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna work on the transmission a little bit, I think. All right. Our Magneto, since we did a video where we recharged it and for some reason it has lost its recharge. Yeah, we lost that a little bit. But next we should be able to put the, uh, well, transmission back together and get it back in the car. Yeah. Yep, we'll, uh, we're gonna take this out. We're gonna move, once we figure out what's going on with the Magneto, we'll mount it to the motor and then we'll mount that. 
drop it in. Probably put the hog's head in before we put it in there because we'll adjust the pants and do all that for a little while. Yeah. Yep, so join us in the next video. We should be getting more of the car together and be driving soon.